Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Hello, and welcome to episode two of the Fit 15 Podcast Show. In today's episode, I am going to share with you how you can set up a home gym for $100 or less. So if you've been wanting to start a fitness routine, but you don't feel comfortable going to the gym or you don't want to spend a lot of money joining a gym, I think you're going to find a lot of value in today's episode, and I'm really excited to share these tips with you. Before I do, I wanted to mention that today is a bonus episode of the Fit15. So I'm going to be the only one speaking today. I'm not going to be joined by an awesome guest. If you'd like to learn more about the show and how things will run normally, you can head on over to episode 000, which is my introductory episode for the show. All right, today's topic, how to set up a home gym for under $100. What do you need for your home gym? The most important thing that you should have for your home gym is just a space for it. This doesn't mean you need to have a basement or a separate room that's just for your gym, but you do need to have some place that is dedicated for your workouts. So if you want to use a treadmill that you already own, because the treadmill will put us over our budget, you want to make sure that it's actually cleared off. If you want to use a section of your living room for your workouts, but someone's always sitting there at the time you would be working out, you're going to need to find another space. If you have lots of items on the floor in the area you want to use, you're going to want to move them so that you're actually able to complete a workout in that area. I know this might seem like an overly basic step, but I have to tell you, I've been a personal trainer for over a decade, and this is actually one of the biggest barriers that keeps people from actually doing their routines at home. So don't overlook it. Like I said, you actually don't need any equipment besides your own body weight to get in a good workout, but you can't use your body in a way that will help you get a good workout if you don't have any space to move it without breaking yourself or something in that space. So that's step one is just finding a good space for your workouts. It can be a space that you move some things out of if you need to, but the more clear it can be, the better, and the more dedicated to just working out, the better. Okay, so you have your space. All you really need is something that costs $0, which is yourself, but there's some other items that are nice to have and can help you vary your workouts. The first item I would recommend you purchase is one that many people don't have. Many of my clients don't buy until I have to remind them several, several times or tell them to get it as a Christmas gift or make them join a program of mine where I make that item be a requirement. I actually have a a program called the Drop Two Sizes Challenge that I did recently where I guarantee that you'll drop two dress or pant sizes in an eight to 10 week period. And I require that my participants purchase foam rollers. And some of my clients who I had had for a while and I've been telling them to get a foam roller didn't purchase one until I did that challenge. So it seems silly, but it really is important. And the reason why I want you to have a foam roller goes back to episode one, which is that it's going to help you do something called self-myofascial release. Self-myofascial release is a technique that's used to break up knots in your muscles. So it helps you to increase your range of motion and your flexibility and therefore preventing injury. It's not usually the first thing that we think of when we think of how we're going to get more flexible, but it really is the best thing you can do besides getting daily massages and most people can't afford daily massages, right? So that's what you want to get is a foam roller. This is going to cost you 10 to $20 depending on where you purchase it. My top tip for purchasing a foam roller is to find one at your local Marshalls or TJ Maxx. You can buy them online and I will do some notes in the show notes for this episode and link to some examples of foam rollers, but Anytime I've had clients look and do the comparison, they've always found that TJ Maxx or Marshalls has the least expensive option. So 
that's where I recommend you start. A few notes on your foam roller. I recommend you get a larger size so that you're able to easily work on both legs at once. If you're on a budget or you don't have a very big space, you can buy a smaller one. The other thing I'd recommend that you do though is to get one that doesn't have all the ridges in it, at least at first, because this is going to replicate a sports massage, not a relaxing massage, but one that's really getting into your muscles. And while those foam rollers that have ridges in them are great and they work well, and there's something that you might want to buy down the line, when you get started, they might feel a little too painful. So just keep that in mind. It's something that maybe you would graduate to and start with a foam roller that's more of medium density. Okay, so you have your foam roller. You've only spent maximum of $20. What else do you need? The next thing I would work on is purchasing some items that can add some resistance to your workouts. So like I said, you already have your body weight. You can do a lot of great exercises like push-ups, lunges, squats, pull-ups. None of those exercises require anything additional than your body. But when you're starting out, you might need to modify some of those moves as you are working to increase your strength. And you also might want to just vary those movements a little bit so that you're not getting bored with them. The way to do that is to purchase some free weights or dumbbells and or if you travel, resistance bands, which will make it easier for you to travel. But either one will do. Before I get into the budgetary implications of adding in some free weights or resistance bands, I wanted to mention that the most important thing when you are purchasing these items is to make sure they are going to be enough resistance for your current fitness level. Unfortunately, I have to call out the ladies on this one because I often find that women are worried that they're going to bulk up if they use too heavy of a weight. But I want to mention two things here that hopefully will help you go out and purchase the correct weight for your current fitness level. And that is that, first of all, your purse probably weighs more than the one pound dumbbell you would prefer to purchase so you won't bulk up. And you carry that around all day and you haven't bulked up yet. So if you're worried about bulking up, don't worry, I'm going to help you out with that point. But this was just your little audio reminder to turn around if you are walking with us for 15 minutes. That is your halfway point reminder. All right. If you're worried about bulking up, what do you do? Well, if you are looking at weights that weigh less than the purse that you carry around all day, definitely want you to think about that and whether or not you are able to get a good workout in if you're lifting something that you already lift all the time. The other analogy or example I have to help you feel a little bit better about buying the appropriate weights for you and the ones that will actually get you results is to think about moms. Moms carry around children that are at least 10 pounds and then when they become toddlers and if they're in kindergarten and they still need to be carried around, They weigh a lot more than 10 pounds, and I haven't seen too many moms that look like the Hulk. So hopefully you are laughing a little bit, and I've convinced you to buy the correct weights. And now all you want to know is how to figure out the correct level, correct? I hope so. So I'm going to share some detailed notes of this on the website and in the show notes for today's episode. Basically, what you'd want to do is ideally have three sets of weights, a low or a light set of weight, a medium set of weight, and a heavier set of weights. If you're on a budget, you could buy three free weights, three dumbbells, a light, medium, and heavy one. Ideally, though, you'll buy two of each so you have a set. Another thing you could do budget-wise is just buy a light and a heavy set of weights. So those are some options budget-wise. How to figure out what weight to purchase is going to require you to complete some exercises. I have one for each weight level. And make sure that you can't do more than 15 repetitions with that weight. Ideally, you'll only be doing 10 repetitions with the weight or even 8 repetitions with the weight when you purchase it in the store because that way you can grow into that weight. And as you get stronger, you will still be able to use it for a while instead of having to buy new weights every few weeks. 
But that's the range you want to be in. If you're able to lift a given weight for a certain exercise for more than 15 repetitions, it's too light to really do any benefit for you in terms of increasing your strength and helping you therefore increase your metabolism. So your body's burning more calories at rest than it would normally and also preventing things like osteoporosis because you're doing good weight-bearing exercise. Okay, so like I said, definitely want to go and check out the show notes for today's episode to learn more about this, but to figure out your correct weights for the lighter set of weights, the lightest set of weights, you want to do an exercise called a front raise with those weights. This just requires you to lift the weights to shoulder height while keeping a slight bend in your elbow and having your palms face the floor, keeping your knees bent slightly so you're protecting your lower back, and making sure that you're doing this without swinging the weights. So like I said, please check out the show notes, but that is your lighter set of weights. For most women, this is going to be a weight that's five to eight pounds. The five pound one might feel pretty difficult if you haven't done this exercise before or you haven't worked on your strength in a while. But if you can lift it for at least eight repetitions and there is a modification I'll give you, I would still recommend purchasing the five or even the eight pound set versus something even lighter because you will pretty quickly adapt to a given weight once you get started. The second set of weights, your medium set of weights, can be figured out by doing a biceps curl. So when you hold your weights, you're going to have them facing away from you. You're going to have a slight bend in your knees and you're going to bring them up to shoulder height without swinging them. And as long as you can do that for at least 10 repetitions, but no more than 15 with proper form, those weights would be an acceptable option for your medium set of weights. The final set of weights is going to be your heavy weights. And for those, I recommend trying a bent over row, which is an exercise you do by hinging forward at your hips, keeping a slight bend in your knees, having your back flat, but kind of on a diagonal and then leading with your elbows to lift the weights to shoulder height. You want to find a weight that allows you to do this for, again, around 10 repetitions, but no more than 15 with proper form in order to make sure that it's the right weight for you for that heavy set. Now, I mentioned that five to eight pounds is usually your light set of weights for women. It might be a little bit closer to 10 pounds for men. For the medium set of weights, you're probably going to have a weight that's between 10 and 12 pounds or 10 and 15 pounds for men. And then for your heavy set of weights, when you're just getting started, you'll be more in that 15 to 20 or 25 pound range. How are we looking on our budget here? For the budget, those weights are going to cost about as much as they weigh in pounds. So if you buy two five pound weights, you're looking at $10. If you buy two 10 pound weights, you're looking at $20. So now we're up to $30. And if you buy two 15 pound weights, you're looking at $30 spent. So we have 30 plus 20 plus 10 is $60 plus our foam roller, which was between 10 and $20, let's say 20. So $80 spent so far. So we're under $100 give or take a few dollars depending on the exact type of weight that you purchase. I think that's pretty good and that's a really good start for your home gym. I will add on some other notes to that sheet that I keep telling you about with other options, other things you might want to add to your home gym, but this is how I would get started. If you decide to purchase resistance bands instead of free weights, you can do the same exercises to find the correct level of resistance band. You can do your front raise. You're just going to step on your band for that one. For your bicep curl, again, step on your band for that one. And for your back row, you're going to do the same thing. Step on the band and complete the exercise using that as your resistance, holding the handles instead of a dumbbell. You may find you only need to purchase a light resistance band and a heavier resistance band because you can loop the band around your feet in order to make it a little bit more challenging. You can find bands from all different brands and they usually cost around $15 per band give or take so that's $45 if you wanted to buy three resistance bands so less than your free weights but not too bad in terms of that overall home gym but I highly recommend purchasing one that is from a known good quality resistance band producer so 
I purchased bands in the past from Walmart. They were very inexpensive and they weren't that great. They really didn't have much of a change in resistance from one level to the next. So there's lots of great bands out there, but I usually recommend purchasing Spree, S-P-R-I bands, and I will link those in the show notes. You can get them on Amazon or you should be able to get them in pretty much any sporting goods store. Those are a good set of bands and you can often find what's called a door jam as well, which is just a small little loop of, I guess, fabric. It's hard to describe what it is. It just looks like a handle almost, but it, it's really more of like a handle. And it goes in your door and it helps you hook up your resistance bands for exercises like band pulls and presses where you're not using your foot as the way to secure the band so you can pull or press on it. So that is another inexpensive option to add to your home gym if you have a home gym that's going to be traveling with you and you're on the road. So that will wrap up today's episode for us. I hope you enjoy learning how to make a home gym for less than $100. I definitely recommend going to the show notes for today's episode or going to fitarmadillo.com slash podcast to get that printout and learn more about additional tools and how to complete the exercises I mentioned in the podcast since I couldn't really show you. I was more describing them to you. And if you're under budget but want to make sure you are completing an efficient, effective workout with these supplies, I highly recommend going to my website, fitarmandillo.com, and booking even one session with one of our talented personal trainers. You'll be able to let them know what equipment you have purchased, what your goals are, and they can definitely set up a great, efficient, effective workout that's customized to your goals, needs, and fitness level that you can repeat on your own if you're motivated enough for even as much as six weeks to really get those benefits before you would need to repeat a session. So a lot of people don't realize that personal trainers can be effective for even one session. So I just wanted to mention that for you if you're starting out the new year, trying to get things going and maybe you don't actually need the added accountability of a trainer several times a week, but want to be able to get started and have all the time you're spending be effective. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. The third episode of the Fit 15 is going to be the first one that is more normal with an awesome guest. I can't wait to share that one with you. In the meantime, I hope you'll check out episode one where I talked about the three main components of health and the three main components of physical fitness and what a good solid fitness routine includes and episode 000 where I did an introduction to the show. Until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day, awesome workouts, and you'll tune in to the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time.